Hi, this is Matt Inglot from Tilted Pixel, and I'm here today to show you how to use Google Webmaster Tools to help you with your search engine optimization. So first thing we want to do is actually pull up the Webmaster Tools. Easiest thing to do, of course, is to Google it. So here we go. So what Webmaster Tools does is it allows us to see extra information from Google about how it's indexing your site and how your site actually appears in search results. A uh, couple big things it does is it allows you to see problems that are coming up uh, that are preventing Google from indexing your site or are hurting your search engine rankings. And it also actually gives you some really good tools to see how well you're ranking, what kind of results you're coming up for, um, and helps you discover ways you can uh, improve your optimization efforts. So to get started using it, first you have to sign up if you don't already have an account. So click the sign up button. I do have an account, so I'm going to log in now and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, I'm logged in into my personal Google Webmaster Tools account. As you see, I already have a few properties listed here, including the Tilted Pixel website, which we'll be using as the demonstration site for this video. You probably don't have any websites listed here yet though. So first thing you want to do is click add a site. And of course you type in your site name uh, and then Google Webmaster Tools will want you to verify it. So because I've already added Tilted Pixel, I'm actually gonna type in my own personal site, mattinglot.com because I haven't added this one yet. Now, one thing to be really careful about when you add your site is to put in the correct address. Some sites uh, use the triple W in front of a name. Uh, some sites have chosen not to. Uh, it's fine either way, but make sure you know which one your site favors and add that one because that's the one that's gonna have uh, the proper data. So I know I use triple W, so I'll put that and I'll click continue. So like I said, now it's gonna ask you to verify that you actually own this website. So to do this, you can do one of two things. If you have someone else managing your website, such as Tilted Pixel, then you would download this file, email it to them, and they will upload it to your website. Then you can go back in again and verify that the file has been uploaded. If you manage your website yourself, you're gonna to have to do this yourself. So download the file, then go into whatever program you use to upload files to your website and upload that file. Uh, the way this is done varies site by site depending what tools you use. So it is outside the scope of the tutorial, uh, but seek help if you need it. Otherwise, get it uploaded, click verify, and away we go. Okay, if you have your site verified, now you can get some very useful information. So like promised, we're actually gonna use Tilted Pixel. And I'm very excited to use it because we just launched the website. So you are gonna see a little bit of errors and things that we need to improve on the website. So it's gonna be a good case study for us. So let's go into Tilted Pixel right now. So the moment I pull up my website, Webmaster Tools actually gives me a really handy little dashboard. Uh, but all of these statistics are also available in the tools we're going to cover. So I won't talk about the homepage, we'll just go straight into the different tools you can use to help your search engine results. Okay, let's begin by making sure that Google can actually access your website properly and that there's not any major errors. So to do that, we do have a couple tools. <laughs> One is the malware tab. So this page ideally should always just say that it has not detected any malware. Uh, this is just a feature of Google that uh, detects if your website has been hacked, if it's had malicious viruses or scripts installed on it. So here, no news is good news. Uh, next, we'll go into crawl, where we have the option to look at crawl errors. So crawl errors are problems with Google accessing pages on your site. It's divided into two sections, site errors and URL errors. Site errors are the really serious stuff. It means that Google is not able to access your website. If you don't see green check marks on the first two, contact whoever's hosting your website or managing it because something's definitely wrong. Uh, the last one, robots.txt, the two okay things are either Webmaster Tools can successfully read it 
or you don't have a robots.txt file. The bad case here is if you've created a robots.txt file, but you have some problems with it, Google can't actually load it up, and then Google is not going to be able to read your website at all. So either have a properly built one or don't have one at all. Now, going forward, the URL errors are errors about specific pages about your site. So that's less serious, but still important to fix. Uh, so that's again split into a few categories. In the case of Tilted Pixel, we have one access denied error, which means the page exists, but our web server is saying, hey, you're not allowed to look at it. And that's our FAQ page because we used to have this page on the old site, then we got rid of it on the new site, uh, and that's why that error is coming up. We also have four links that we seem to have broken while moving from old site to new site, and they all seem to be related to one blog post that we wrote on our old, old blog. So if you see any broken links, that means that there's still content either on your website or possibly on other people's websites that is still linking to that old page. So when you see a broken link like this, it's in your best interest to fix it because chances are people are still trying to visit it. Uh, if you don't have that content anymore, many content management systems will actually allow you to redirect that link to some other page that exists. So the, the best option to do then is to do that. Uh, and I think that's pretty much everything. Just go in here, see what errors you have, get them fixed. Uh, another cool tool is the crawl stats. It lets you see how often Google is crawling your site. And we launched our website mid-August, and you can actually see how the number of times that Google crawls our website spiked the moment we launched it. And that's because Google detected that we made changes on our website. And the more changes you make on your website or the more popular it is, uh, the more often Google's going to decide it needs to crawl your page to keep up. If Google's not crawling your page often, chances are that you're either not updating it, or not updating it often, or maybe it's just not that popular yet. Uh, the only thing that this really affects if this is low, other than kind of making you think about those facts, is uh, it does mean when you make changes to your website, it's going to take longer for them to reflect in your search engine results. Uh, second graph we won't really worry about for this tutorial. It shows how much data Google Crawler downloads. Uh, it's a little bit more technical. Um, but the next graph is really important. It shows how quickly Google can download your website. And you want this number to be as low as possible. So in our case, it's generally between uh, kind of 100 and 150 milliseconds. If you're finding these numbers are consistently coming above 200 milliseconds, definitely see what you can do to bring this down. Uh, work with your webmaster or web developer uh, to fix the problem because uh, page load speeds do actually affect your search engine rankings and they also affect how likely it is for a person to use your website. Uh, there have been studies done on this and something ridiculous like an extra second of page load time actually turns a fair amount of people away. So keep this number low. Uh, Google does have a few more tools listed here. Uh, but most of them we don't really need to worry about. The only other one we'll talk about is sitemaps. Uh, sitemaps allow you to submit a sitemap. We haven't not done this yet on the new Tilted Pixel site. Uh, and basically what sitemaps do is they allow you to submit sort of a computerized uh, instruction telling Google uh, how your website is laid out, how the pages relate to each other. Uh, it is a good thing to have. Uh, if you don't have it, don't sweat it. There's probably bigger fish to fry first before you worry about it. Uh, but if you do have one or your CMS generates one, then this is where you go to add it. And that's basically it for just checking general health of your website. Next thing we're going to take a look at is we're going to see uh, what Google sees when it searches for your website and how it's actually uh, looking at your content. Okay, let's take a look at the content keywords tool first. So this lets you basically see what Google thinks your website is about. Uh, so this is Tilted Pixel, so it's no surprise that Tilted and Pixel are coming up. 
Uh, marketing is coming up as well, which is really good. Waterloo, Ontario, those are good words to be coming up for. And you can see the significance, which is how important Google thinks that word is to your website content. But I can also see a problem here. Nowhere in this first list do I actually see the words website, development, or design. Uh, so it sounds like we actually have some work to do on our new website content. And this is actually a very common pitfall to fall into when you're writing your initial content is you forget to actually refer to your own services. You write things like our work rather than what it is that you actually do. So clearly we've made that mistake here and we need to rectify it. Uh, the words that you want appearing here should be consistent with the keyword research that you have done. So we actually have written a uh, blog post about how to do keyword research. Uh, videos coming out soon as well. Uh, you should do keyword research before you do any sort of search engine optimization. Uh, and once you have a, a keyword list, those are the types of words that should be coming up here. It's okay if you get some other ones that are irrelevant, like for some reason tweets is coming up for Tilted Pixels website as really relevant. I don't really think so. Um, but it's okay, it's not harming anything but I do want to see the words that I'm interested in ranking for to appear here. Uh, next, let's take a look at the links to your website. This is a nice tool tool. Two, it shows you a couple important things. One, it shows you who's actually linking to your website. Uh, there is other ways to get that data uh, and with some more information. For example, if you have Google Analytics installed, you can actually see which websites are sending traffic to your website. Uh, but it is a nice way of gauging how many links you actually have in total and what the main websites linking to you are. Uh, the other one that's kind of really interesting is which pages on your website are actually receiving links. So you can see in the case of Tilted Pixel, uh, our old site didn't have a blog. So most websites are linking to just our homepage, uh, www.tiltedpixel.com. And then there are a few sites for whatever reason that are linking out to some of the other pages on our website. Uh, now that we do have a blog, we're uh, producing some content that we're sharing with everybody. Uh, I expect in the next couple months, we're actually gonna see a lot more diversity in this list as different uh, sites share our blog posts and we start getting links from a lot more sites. Uh, and the bottom one, how your data is linked. Uh, so this is the text that is used uh, when creating the link. Uh, it's, it's actually called uh, anchor text. So this also has some impact on what you rank, what kind of keywords you rank for. Uh, there's recently been some changes into how effective that text actually is. Uh, but traditionally speaking, uh, if you're trying to rank, for example, for website solutions, it's definitely nice if the link actually talks about website solutions instead of just always linking to your company name. Of course, we do have a lot of links that are company name and you'll always see that, but it's good to have a little bit more diversity than that. And it looks like that's something that we should also be working on. Uh, last tool I wanna mention for optimizing your site content Actually, there's two tools. Uh, second last tool I want to mention is HTML improvements. Uh, so this is a really nice page for quickly finding really problematic uh, issues with some key page information. So two of the most important tags on your website pages is the title tag and the meta description. Uh, and your content management system really, really should be allowing you to edit these. And it's really important to have these be different on every page. So again, we have a blog article that talks about these tags in more detail, uh, but very briefly, the title tag is the title of a page. Uh, and it should be something that incorporates your keywords, makes it clear what the page is about, if you're trying to optimize for a local search, then definitely doesn't hurt to include your location. And the meta description is the description of a page and that's used, uh, for example, in search engine results. Uh, when showing your page, oftentimes the meta description is what's shown. So it's important to pay attention to uh, how you set these tags. 
so that they're good. Again, check out our blog post for some tips on that. And it's important to make sure that these tags exist uh, and that they're unique to each page and that they're of the proper length. So this tool is nice because it lets you find errors in that. So in the case of Tilted Pixel, luckily we don't have any missing title tags, uh, but we do have 14 pages that uh, actually have duplicate titles, which means more than one page has the same title. So it looks like there's some issues with the way our portfolio is set up, for example, and maybe a glitch in our blog as well. So we'll go ahead and we'll fix those. Uh, if you find any duplicate tags, of course, you should fix them on your site too. Uh, you'll also see long, short, and non-informative. Uh, title tags really shouldn't be any longer than, let's say, about 70 characters. And the reason for that limit is the title tag is also often used in search results, and 70 characters is about where search engines cut you off if you're too long, and you don't really want to see that happen. You also don't want your title tags to be really short. You want them to be descriptive and you want them to make sense. So if your title tag is nothing but like your company name, uh, that's too short. Uh, think of something more creative, get some keywords in there, and again, read our blog post. And lastly, there's non-informative title tags, which basically means Google doesn't think your title is actually relevant to your page content. A uh, big mistake a lot of companies make is they set their title of their site, especially of their homepage, to just home. Now, unless your website is actually talking about a home, uh, there's no reason why the word home should be in your page title. So again, Webmaster Tools is nice, helps you catch all of these different types of errors. So check HTML improvements. If you see anything here, it's worth your time to get it fixed and to get it fixed properly. Okay, so now the last tool that I want to talk about, uh, and I'll just mention it briefly because it is a little bit more technical, uh, but it is going to become more and more important. So it's worth mentioning. And that's something called structured data. Structured data is uh, basically talking about uh, providing a little bit more information inside your website about what the different pieces of content actually are. So that works by inserting little codes into your website content. So for example, if you put a phone number in your website, there are now codes you can insert to tell uh, services such as search engine that this number here is actually a phone number. Uh, and it does help them to rank your website better and to understand your website content better. For some businesses, it's more important than others. Uh, particularly if you're an e-commerce website, it's worth uh, setting your website up so that this information is filled in because then Google can actually read information such as product reviews, uh, prices of your products, names of your products, and in turn, you get better search engine listings than if that information is not there. But like I said, it is a little bit more technical. So either you need help from your web developer to actually implement these codes, or the other tool you can use is something called the data highlighter. Uh, that's a little bit outside the scope of this tutorial as to how to use it, but it is an alternative to inserting these codes yourself. What you do is you install the data highlighter code once into your website, and then it actually provides a nice graphical interface for installing these codes. Uh, so I would try to get the codes installed yourself first, but if that fails, then the data highlighter is a good tool as well. Next, uh, we want to take a look at the final piece, uh, which is Google will actually tell you how you're doing in search engine rankings, how often you're appearing, and so on. So let's take a look at that. So let's take a look at search engine performance. To do that, we look at search traffic and search queries. And here we get this very nice report that tells us some really cool things. So first, along the top, uh, Google tells us how many different queries we actually came up for. And this is all for a given date range, by the way. So for example, this is looking specifically at August. Uh, so it shows you how many different queries you came up for. It shows you how many times you were listed in search engines, which is really, really nice. So you're not only looking at how many visitors came to your website, for example, or how many times you were clicked, you're actually seeing how many times you showed up in someone's search results. And then you do see the clicks, uh, and you can compare the two numbers and see how many times people are actually clicking through to your website. In fact, down below, 
Google tells you all the different words that you showed up for in search engine results, along with the times you showed up and how many times you were clicked. And it actually calculates that click through rate for you. Uh, so you can see, for example, we're showing up 17% for a tilted pixel, uh, which is pretty high, but you would expect that considering tilted pixel is our name. So if someone's searching that, they better be want to visit our website. Um, and the important thing is you want click-through rate uh, to not get too low uh, because what that means to and what that signals back to Google is that maybe this is not the right result to be showing for. So if you're seeing a keyword that you really want to be ranking for, but the click-through rate is pretty low, like let's say below 1%, uh, then that's really bad news because it means people are choosing not to click on your website. Uh, with this data in hand, though, you can actually fix this. Uh, that typically means, uh, assuming your site's actually valid for that keyword, it typically means that you have to tweak your title tag or meta description uh, to make them more relevant to what the user is searching for. Uh, and you can tweak these and uh, work on getting your click-through rate higher and higher because it's not just a matter of trying to rank uh, higher in search engines, it's also a matter of actually getting people to click your website once you've ranked. Um, so the other thing that uh, is really nice here, it also shows you the top pages that come up when you do show up in search results. So of course our homepage is really high up. Uh, most of our search engine traffic does come from our homepage. Uh, but you'll see that there are some other pages on our website that are also coming up and are also attracting search engine traffic. Now, all of these stats that you're seeing are basically from our old website. And one thing our old website didn't have and which we're really excited to have now is a blog. And I'm expecting all the stats on the site to change now because of that blog, because I am expecting more uh, links for in search engines coming from specific blog posts rather than just to the home page. Uh, so a good workflow here is optimize your website, uh, wait about a month to see what sort of impact those optimizations have had, and then take a look at tools such as what uh, this view and webmaster tools uh, look at Google Analytics, which is easily the subject of several videos. So that's something that we'll probably talk about in the future. Uh, and actually gauge uh, and see what sort of impacts your optimizations uh, have had. And just keep repeating this over and over and over again until you get the kind of search engine rankings that you desire. So optimize, measure, optimize, measure. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Uh, and definitely, if you haven't signed up for Webmaster Tools yet, uh, now you've got some great reasons. So you should go ahead and do that. Thanks, and we'll see you in another video.